What's up, y'all? It's like three days till Christmas. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure when I'm gonna be able to post this. Hopefully tomorrow, in which case it'll be two days. Uh, it's a tune called Christmas Eve, and it came up in a request, I think, on the last video. So thank you for requesting stuff. I always like that. Keep them coming. And it's one that's a good standard session tune. It's a three-part reel, which is a little unusual, for at least for this channel. Don't do a ton of those. That's one that I used to play when I was on tour, and uh, since I didn't do the tour this year, uh, probably the last time I played it was about a year ago. So we'll break down the basic melody here, starting with the A part. As always, I'll try not to play too quickly. It's a three-part tune again, so I'm not going to go through like each segment. Hopefully I'll play it slowly enough, you can pick it up. There's a lot of long held notes in this tune, which hopefully if you're like following along, you know that that's good places for rolls and all sorts of other stuff, which we'll get to in a second. B part. That's the second part. Again, jumps up to that high octave there. Um, and there's a lot of those same kind of long held notes. Keep in mind where you might be thinking ahead where you want to throw some of those rolls. With that one, there's a lot of repetitive stuff, which we can also switch up with rolls and things like that. Not quite as many long held notes, uh, but that's the basic structure of it. Ornaments wise, from the A part, you get those long notes right off the bat, and then when I play just the basic melody, long held notes. So what I would play, doing a crayon there on the D, and I usually cut it to start. This one's a little odd because a lot of times it'll start with kind of two pickup notes. The ornaments, I would go. You can just do kind of a simple thing, D and E, and then a roll on a G, or that's sort of a piping thing, very specific to piping, that the kind of long crayon. As you hit the note, you're doing all three crayon notes. So that's an option. Otherwise, you don't have to necessarily make it that complicated roll there. I usually do a short roll on the B. Usually it's that long note. I tend to pop that A. The B, again, it's, I just keep it as a simple, uh, simple cut. Do a simple cut on the D again as this part turns around. That's one thing I like to do is a triple roll on the G. That may be a bit much. Uh, it's up to you. You can always keep it a little bit simpler. Just do a regular roll. That's what I like to do. Because you're sitting on that for a fair bit. And there's not a ton of places in these tunes where you can do that. And I just kind of like that ornament. It's a, more of a Highland pipe thing, but I think it fits pretty well. Again there. Back to the crown again. Those, you spend a lot of time on the G in this tune. Of course, the tune is in G. It just kind of dances around that. Um, as you jump up to the G from the D, I just do a tap, just somewhat more subtle. And then to finish it is just a short A lot of options with that um, because you are just kind of hovering around that one note. So you can you can play around with it, try it, don't overdo it, like I sometimes tend to do, but see what you think. The B part of this tune starts off on the B, and I would just jump to a simple cut. So right off the bat, again, 
I do a, a pretty much always do a triplet on that because I, I kind of like how it gets up to that next octave. And that's one of those where, since you're playing the C natural, it's going to make that nice kind of cool popping sound. Those uh, triplets jump out at you, which is why I do it a lot. And then a short roll up there. I do a triplet to get up to the G. Um, that's one that would probably sound a little bit better on a fiddle or a box or some other instrument, as opposed to the triplet down here where we did the, the beginning of it. It's, it fits really well. It's not ideal, but it's, I need some way to get up there, and that's what I like to do. Back-to-back -back short rolls. Um, I just kind of like the sound of that. There's other options, but that's what I like to do. And then long rolls. That's kind of why I do it that way. It's, to me, it's just kind of a nice little bit of symmetry there. I do a crown on that high D, not every time, because, um, again, don't want to overdo it. It's fun to mix it up but it just gives a bit of a, a cool punch there. I try to keep that part hopefully fairly simple because there's a lot of stuff jammed in there and those notes move around. You don't necessarily have to overload it too much, I wouldn't think. The C part with this one does kind of stick around some of those, it basically sticks around a couple of notes. A lot of G's, a lot of B's. And I do kind of back-to-back -back triple rolls there. A lot of times I'll do that the first time through, the second time I might keep it a little bit more mellow. That second time through, I tend to keep fairly straight. You could do a, just a, a, a sort of a slide. So it's kind of a slide and a combination of a short roll. Just a roll on A for that. Otherwise, there's not a lot to it. Just a couple of cuts. Sometimes I'll just stick on that note rather than jumping back up to the B. Kind of coming down the scale. Mostly just cuts through that whole, the whole little phrase because it's sort of that long walk down kind of thing. But I hope you guys dig this tune. Again, it's a real classic standard session tune. Uh, it's a three part one, which is neat. Um, and it's right for the season, I suppose. So I hope you guys are having a great holiday. Let me know if there's anything else I can do. Any other questions, comments, requests, let me know. See you guys later. Probably see you all in the next year. Cheers.